Requiem Fora Gabriel Fora composed his Requiem in D minor, op. 48, between 1887 and 1890. The choral orchestral setting of the shortened Catholic Mass for the Dead in Latin is the best known of his large works. Its focus is on eternal rest and consolation. Fora's reasons for composing the work are unclear, but do not appear to have had anything to do with the death of his parents in the mid-minus 1880s. He composed the work in the late 1880s and revised it in the 1890s, finishing it in 1900. In seven movements, the work is scored for soprano and baritone soloists, mixed choir, orchestra, and organ. Different from typical requiem settings, the full sequence dies eri is omitted, replaced by its section pi gesu. The final movement in Paradisum is based on a text that is not part of the liturgy of the funeral mass but of the burial. Fora wrote of the work, Everything I managed to entertain by way of religious illusion I put into my requiem, which moreover is dominated from beginning to end by a very human feeling of faith in eternal rest. The piece premiered in its first version in 1888 in La Madeleine in Paris for a funeral mass. A performance takes about 35 minutes. History Far as reasons for composing his requiem are uncertain. One possible impetus may have been the death of his father in 1885 and his mother's death two years later, on New Year's Eve 1887. However, by the time of his mother's death he had already begun the work, about which he later declared, My requiem wasn't written for anything for pleasure, if I may call it that. The earliest composed music included in the requiem is the Libera Me, which Farrer wrote in 1877 as an independent work. In 1887-88, Fara composed the first version of the work, which he called on Petit Requiem with five movements in Trit and Kyri Sanctus, Pi Jesu Agnes Dei, and in Paradisum, but did not include his Libera Me. This version was first performed on 16 January 1888 for the funeral of Joseph Lesufash, an architect, at La Madeleine, Paris. The composer conducted his work, the treble soloist was Louis Aubert. In 1889, Fara added the hostages portion of the offertory, and in 1890, he expanded the offertory and added the 1877 Libera Me. This second version was premiered on 21 January 1893, again at the Madeleine with Fara conducting. The church authorities allowed no female singers and insisted on boy treble and alto choristers and soloists, Fara composed the work with those voices in mind and had to employ them for his performances at the Madeleine, but in the concert hall, unconstrained by ecclesiastical rules, he preferred female singers for the upper choral parts and the solo in the Pi Jesu. In 1899-1900, the score was reworked for full orchestra. This final version was premiered at the Trocadero in Paris on 12 July 1900, during the Exposition Universelle, Paul Taffanel conducted forces of 250 performers. The composer said of the work, Everything I managed to entertain by way of religious illusion I put into my requiem, which moreover is dominated from beginning to end by a very human feeling of faith in eternal rest. He told an interviewer, It has been said that my requiem does not express the fear of death and someone has called it a lullaby of death. But it is thus that I see death, as a happy deliverance, an aspiration towards happiness above, rather than as a painful experience. The music of Gaunot has been criticized for its inclination towards human tenderness. But his nature predisposed him to feel this way religious emotion took this form inside him. Is it not necessary to accept the artist's nature? As to my requiem, Perhaps I have also instinctively sought to escape from what is thought right and proper after all the years of accompanying burial services on the organ. I know it all by heart. I wanted to write something different. In 1924, the Requiem, in its full orchestral version, was performed at Fara's own funeral. It was not performed in the United States until 1931 at a student concert at the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia. It was first performed in England in 1936. Text 
Most of the text is in Latin, except for the Kyrie, which is Koine Greek. As had become customary, Fora did not set the gradual and tracked sections of the Mass. He followed a French Baroque tradition by not setting the Requiem sequence, the Dizere, only its section Pi Jesu. He slightly altered the texts of the Intrate, the Kyrie Pi Jesu, Agnes Dei, and in Paradisum, but substantially changed the text of the Offertory described below. He did not set the Benedictus the conclusion of the Sanctus, and added two texts from the Order of Burial, Libera Me and in Paradisum. Fora made changes to the text of the Offertory. At the beginning, he adds in O. He changed Libera Animus Omnium Fidelium Defunctorum Deliver the Souls of All the Faithful Departed to simply Libera Animus Defunctorum Deliver the Souls of the Departed. He replaced Libera Ease Deliver Them at the beginning of the next verse with a repetition of O Domine Jesu Christ, Rex Glorii, Libera Animus Defunctorum. And he omitted the third verse beginning said Signifer Sanctus. The Hantus, the Hantus, the Tess, the Hantus, the Tess, the Tess, the Tess, the Tess, the Tess. He concludes with an added Amen. Structure and Scoring The composition is structured in seven movements. The piece has a duration of about 35 minutes. Thora scored the work for two soloists, chorus and orchestra. Its movements and their sections are listed in a table for the scoring invoices, key time signature using the symbol for common time, equivalent to 44 and tempo marking. The voices are abbreviated, S for soprano, A for alto, T for tenor, B for bass. The composer divides the choir into as many as six parts, sat, but frequently uses unison of one part or several. Given the liturgical nature of the work, Boy trebles are often used instead of sopranos. Details, sis, deals. The structure of Fora's work bears striking similarity to that of Ein Deutsch's Requiem by Brahms, although Fora set Latin liturgical texts to music, whereas Brahms chose German Bible quotations. Both works have seven movements, both employ a baritone and a soprano soloist, the baritone singing with the choir in movements two and six, the soprano in a central movement, movement four in Fara, movement five in Brahms, where she appears with the choir. In both works, the four remaining movements are sung by the choir alone, whereas Verdi, for example, has the soloists sing several areas and ensembles in his Requiem. Intrate at Kyrie. Similar to Mozart's Requiem, the work begins slowly in D minor. After one measure of just D in the instruments, the choir enters pianissimo in six parts on the D minor chord and stays on it in homophony for the entire text Requiem Aeternam Eternal Rest. In gradual progression of harmony and a sudden crescendo, a first climax is reached on at Lux Perpetua and lasting light, diminishing on a repeated loose seat, eyes may shine for them. The tenors repeat the prayer alone for eternal rest on a simple melody. The sopranos continue similarly that praise is due in Jerusalem, then all voices exclaim exaudi here. The Kyrie begins with the same melody that the tenor sang before, but now in unison of soprano, alto and tenor, repeated in the following four measures in four-part harmony. The call Christ is strong and urgent the first time, repeated more softly a few more times. The final call Kyrie appears pianissimo. Offertoire the offertoire begins in B minor, with a canon of alto and tenor in short succession, on a simple modal melody, with little ambitus, in a prayer O Domine, Jesu Christ, Rex Glory, O Lord, Jesus Christ, King of Glory, to free the souls of the departed from eternal punishment, and the deep lake, ending in unison. The sequence is repeated beginning one step higher for the next line and again one step higher for the following more urgent call to Jesus enforced by the basses. The voices add only softly, broken by rests, what the prayer is about, me cadent in obscurum, that they may not fall into the darkness. The baritone enters with hostages at priests, offerings brought with praises, beginning on one repeated note, but asking with more melody fact ease, domine de mort transire, et vitin make them, Lord transcend from death to life. 
The choir repeats the first line of the text on the same motif as in the beginning, but in more elaborate polyphony in four parts, concluded by an uplifting amen in B major. Sanctus, Sanctus holy in contrast with other compositions of Mass, and Requiem where it is often illustrated with great vocal and instrumental forces, particularly Verdi's Requiem, is here expressed in extremely simple form. The sopranos sing softly in a very simple rising and falling melody of only three notes, which the male voices repeat, accompanied by arpeggios on the harp, and a dreamy rising melody in the violins, sometimes just a solo violin. The pattern appears several times, with the melodies increasing in ambitus, and the volume reaching forte on excelsis the highest. The orchestra changes tone, the dreamy accompaniment, is replaced by firm and powerful major chords with a horn fanfare marked forte, and the male voices declare Hasana in excelsis praise in the highest. This is answered by the sopranos in diminuendo, and the music softens and reverts to the dreamy harp arpeggios that it began with as the violin melody floats upwards to the final note in E flat major and the full choir repeats, with the altos finally joining Sanctus. Pi Jesu a solo soprano or treble sings the prayer to the good Jesus for everlasting rest. The one line of text is repeated three times, the first two times asking for requiem rest, then intensified for sempiternam requiem everlasting rest. The first call is a modal melody in B-flat major of six measures, the second call is similar but reaching up higher. The words dona eyes, domine, dona eyes requiem begin with more expansion, but reach alternating between only two notes on two repetitions of sempiternam requiem. The last call begins as the first and leads again to alternating between two notes in even lower range until the last requiem has a gentle upward motion. Agnes Day Agnes Day, in many settings of mass and requiem set with dark expression, begins in F major with a fluent expansive melody in the orchestra. After six measures, the tenors sing a melody to it that gently rises and falls, and repeats it almost the same way. Then, while the motion in the orchestra stays the same, the key changes to the minor mode, and the Lamb of God is asked for rest in chords of daring harmonic progression. Then the tenors, without instrumental introduction, repeat the first line, leading to a peaceful sempiternam. The Sopranos alone begins the following section, Lux Eternal Lucy, eyes light eternal shine for them with a long Lux, then the choir, divided in six parts, lets that light shimmer. The choir closes with a reprise of the intrate, the opening of the Mass Requiem Eternam, before the orchestra picks up the Agnes Dei melody to close the movement. Libera Me The baritone soloist sings the first section alone. On a bass in an ostinato rhythm of two quarter notes, a rest and the upbeat to the next two quarters, he sings the text Libera Me, Free Me, Lord, from eternal death on that terrible day when the heavens will move and the earth, when you come to judge the world with fire, embarking on a melody of wide range, with some sharp leaps. The text is continued by the choir in four parts in homophony, Tremens Factus Sumigo, I am trembling. In more motion, Dies Iri Day of Wrath is expressed by fortissimo chords, giving way to the prayer for rest in the same motion, but piano with a crescendo on Dona Eyes, Domine, but suddenly softening, on a last at Lux Perpetua Lucite Eyes. Then the choir repeats the opening statement of the baritone fully in unison. Soloist, then choir, end the movement softly, repeating Libera Me, Domine. In Paradisum, the text of the last movement is taken from the order of burial. In Paradisum de Ducant Angeli may angels lead you to paradise rests on a continuous shimmering motion in fast broken triads in the orchestra. The sopranos sing a rising expressive melody, enriched by chords of the other voices, divided in six parts on the final Jerusalem. A second thought is again sung by the sopranos, filled on the last words by the others, Requiem Eternam. Versions, versions, Farah revised and enlarged the Requiem in the years between its first performance in 1888 
and the publication of the final version in 1901. The latter is scored for full orchestra, since the 1970s attempts have been made by several forest scholars to reconstruct the composer's earlier versions scored for smaller orchestral forces. First version. Five of the seven sections of the Requiem were completed by January 1888 and performed that month at the Madeleine for the funeral of the architect Joseph Lesufache. This version lacked the offertoire and liberami, which Fora added at some time in the following decade. The liberami predates the rest of the Requiem, having been composed eleven years earlier as a baritone solo. The forces required for the original 1888 version were a choir, about 40 in number consisting of boys and men. The Madeline did not admit female choristers, solo boy treble, harp, timpani, organ, strings, solo violin, divided violas, divided cellos, and basses. For a performance at the Madeline in May 1888, far added horn and trumpet parts. 1893 Version Fora continued to work intermittently on the Requiem, and by 1893, he judged the score ready to be published, although the proposed publication fell through. Several attempts have been made to reconstruct the score as it was in 1893. The Fora specialist Jean Mitchell Nectu began working on it in the 1970s, but the first edition to be published was by the English conductor John Rutter in 1989. Nectu is edition jointly edited with Roger Dulwich, was published in 1994. They had the advantage of access to important source material unavailable to Rutter, a set of orchestral parts discovered in 1968 in the Madeleine, and a score made in the 1890s by a bass in the Madeleine choir and annotated by Farah. Music and letters judged the Rutter edition, makeshift and lacking in the standards of scholarship one expects from a university press. The Musical Times considered the Nectu and Dillage edition invaluable. Farah's own manuscript survives, but, as the critic Andrew Thompson puts it, the waters were muddied by his overwritings on the original emesis, adding two bassoons and two more horns and trumpets, together with modifications of the cello and bass parts. Reviewing the Nectu and Dillage edition, Thompson wrote of several pleasant surprises, including the restoration of the urgent timpani rolls underlining Christ a lesson, and the ethereal harp chords which so enhance the spiritual atmosphere of Lux Eternanana. For the 1893 version of baritone solo, two bassoons, four horns and two trumpets are added to the original scoring. When possible, Fora employed a mixed choir and a female soprano soloist, partly because the soprano lines, particularly the solo in the Pi Gesu, are difficult to sing and demand excellent breath control, easier for adult women than for boys. Final version. At the end of the 1890s, Forrest publisher, Julian Hamel, suggested that the composer should rescore the Requiem for performance in concert halls. The intimate sound of the earlier versions was effective in liturgical performances, but for the large concert venues and large choral societies of the time, a larger orchestra was required. The autograph of the resulting 1900 version does not survive, and critics have speculated whether Farah, who was not greatly interested in orchestration, delegated some or all of the revision to one of his pupils. Many details of the augmented score differ from Farah's own earlier amendments to the original 1888 manuscript. The new score was published in 1901, at the same time as a vocal score edited by one of Forrest's favorite pupils, Jean Roger Ducas, and some critics have speculated that he reorchestrated the full score at Forrest's instigation. Others have questioned whether so skilled an orchestrator as Roger Ducas would have perpetrated such pointlessly inconspicuous doublings, or left uncorrected the many misprints in the 1901 edition. Alan Blith speculates that the work may have been done by someone in Hamel's firm. The misprints have been corrected in later editions, notably those by Roger Fisk and Paul Inwood 1978 and Nectu 2001. The orchestration of the final version comprises mixed choir, solo soprano, solo baritone, two flutes, two clarinets only in the Pi Gesu, two bassoons, four horns, 
two trumpets only in the Kyrie and Sanctus, three trombones, timpani only in the Libera Me, harp, organ, strings with only a single section of violins. Nectu has expressed the view that what he terms the Church 1893 and the Concert 1900-1901 versions of the Requiem should both be performed, the choice of edition being dictated by the size of the venue. It is not clear whether the composer favored either version over the other. Blith comments all of his comments about the Requiem ring truer as descriptions of the 1888 and 1894 sick versions than of the published text of 1901. Farah, however, complained in 1921 that the orchestra at a performance of the work had been too small and commented to Eugene Assay on the angelic violins during the Sanctus in the full orchestral version. Selected editions, selected editions. Farah Mester Requiem, Op. 48, ed. Jean Mitchell Nectu and Reiner Zimmerman edition Peters. Farah Requiem, Op. 48, ed. Roger Fisk and Paul Inwood, Eulenburg slash Scott. Farah Requiem, 1893 version, ed. Jean Mitchell Nectu and Roger Dillage full score and miniature score, Hamel. Selected recordings. The Requiem was first recorded in 1931 by Fanny Melmore Marsalak, soprano, Louis Mortier, baritone, the Choir de la Societe Bach, and Orchestre Alexander Sellier, conducted by Gustav Brett. It was first issued on the gramophone label and reissued in 1934 on HMV. That recording used the full 1900 orchestrations, as did all others except one over the next half century. The exception was a Columbia set recorded in 1938 with Susan Dupont, soprano Morris Didier, baritone, Les Chanters de Lyon and Le Trigentur Instrumental Lionize, conducted by Ernest Bermock. Since 1984, when John Rutter's edition of the 1893 score was recorded for the Conifer label, there have been numerous sets of both the 1893 and 1900 versions issued on CD. Those singled out for particular mention by critics are listed below. The Requiem is often combined in recordings and concert performances with Fora's early cantique de Jean Racine, an award-winning composition originally for choir and organ which the composer wrote aged 19 in his last year of 10 years at the School of Church Music École Niedermeyer de Paris. 1888 Version Reconstruction Lisa Beckley, Nicholas Jedge, Scola Cantorum of Oxford, Oxford Camerata Instrumental Ensemble, Jeremy Summerley, 1994. 1893 Version Caroline Ashton, Stephen Varco, Cambridge Singers, City of London Symphonia, John Rutter, 1984. Recommended by the Penguin Guide to the 1000 Finest Classical Recordings 2011 and the Gramophone Guide 2012. Judith Bledgen, James Morris, Atlanta Symphony Chorus and Orchestra, Robert Shaw, 1987. Recommended by the American Record Guide, 2000. Sandrine Pio, Stéphane de Gout, Maitres de Paris, Orchestre National de France, Lawrence Equilby, 2008. Recommended by the Gramophone Guide, 2012. Grace Davidson, William Gaunt, Tenebrae, London Symphony Orchestra Chamber Ensemble, Nigel Short, 2011. Recommended by Richard Morrison, Building a Library, BBC Radio 3, 2016. 1900 Version Victoria de Los Angeles, Dietrich Pfister D. Scout, Coriel Elizabeth Brasser, Orchestre de la Societe des Concerts du Conservatoire, André Clayton's St. Rock, Paris, 1963. Recommended by All Music Guide to Classical Music 2005. Robert Chilcott, John Carroll Case, Choir of King's College, Cambridge, New Philharmonia Orchestra. Sir David Wilcox, 1967. Recommended by the Gramophone Guide 2012. Kathleen Battle, Andreas Schmidt, Philharmonia Chorus and Orchestra, Carlo Maria Giolini, 1986. Recommended by All Music Guide to Classical Music 2005. Notes and References Notes References